Hello, Ada. Good afternoon. How are you? <laughs> How is your husband? My, my twins. <laughs> How is that little kicking star you're carrying? Oh, oh, that's great. Oh, sure, exactly. That's the reason I'm calling. I literally just put my things in the car. And I'll be off to the airport any moment. You did get my itinerary. not a problem the important thing is that i get to you safe isn't it yeah don't worry don't worry about it i know how busy you guys can get over there yeah um the visa I actually called and uh, yeah you know um with this um delay in flights and uh, flight cancellations estimated time of arrival is no longer a guarantee these days so just in case you go into labor before i arrive and you know these little things they come up with their own surprises <laughs> You actually came two weeks early. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, just a few things eh, I need to remind you of. Remember who you are. Strong African woman. Okay? So once you go into labor, you walk into that room with confidence. Yeah? I had seven of you without any complications. So I don't expect you to have any problem. Hmm? It runs in the family. Wide supple pelvis. Yeah. So there's no talk of a cesarean section even. Amen. Amen. Yes. And then one more thing. I hear in some countries, you know, that there are a group of doctors. I don't know what they're called. Eh? They walk around with needles looking for women in labor to give uh, this injection. What do they call it? Um, epi epidural. Yeah. You got the name. I got the concept. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know how to say it better you're asking what is wrong with it have you not read your bible genesis chapter 3 16 in pain you will bring forth your child Ada, that pain is the only evidence you have to motherhood though. you're bragging right you've started arguing it's not even for us africans look at your cousin despite everything i told her she went and had it now, three years later, she has come down with this nagging pain. So severe, she can't even satisfy her husband in bed. Okay. Uh -huh. I even here can paralyze you. Anyway, that's one thing that puts me off. You keep arguing and arguing and arguing. I've done what I should do as a mother. I hope your husband will be going with you. Yeah, maybe I will talk to him directly because if I'm there, nobody will come near you with that thing. And if I'm not there, he better stand his ground. Yes. Anyway, um, see you later. See you. Uh, just wish me safe journey. Bye bye. Huh? Arguing all the time. Huh? What a stubborn generation. Hello. Good morning. Today we will be looking at pregnancy, labor, and anesthesia. And I'll start by asking you where are you in your journey of motherhood? Are you an older mother with? adult children, adult relatives, and you're not playing a supervisory role? Or are you in the middle of your journey with younger friends and relatives or even colleagues and you've become an advisor? You could also be at the receiving end where you're an intended mother or a new mother and you're looking up to some other people for their life experiences. You could also be a father, an uncle, a brother, or even a partner or a spouse. How do we support our pregnant ladies? Right, in starting this series, I will um, be bursting some myths in this episode because it's very important that we have a basic understanding of what you're talking about. The skits you just watched, and they're not stories told to me by anybody. I've come across people with these thoughts and with these ideas. So let us clarify things. First of all, there are no two women who are the same, no matter how related they are, not even twins. And they will not respond to pregnancy in the same way. So can we please stop comparing ourselves with our progeny, our friends or our relatives? Even in the same woman, no two pregnancy is the same experience and no two babies are the same. Again, there is no evidence to say that African women are any stronger 
than any other group of women during pregnancy. Actually, there's a lot of evidence out there that African women have a higher chance of dying from pregnancy-related issues, both those who live in Africa and those who live outside of Africa. The third point here is pregnancy is actually a blessing and you're bringing in a new life. And so in doing that, you need to be careful. You need to um, look after yourself. So the scripture that was quoted in that case, which is um, Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, and that was a scenario where Adam and Eve had sinned and God had come down very angry with them and um, cursing them for what they did. And the curse he gave the woman was that she was going to, you know, have a painful childbirth. Now, if um, that was a curse, I don't know why anybody would choose to be bringing forth um, a blessing in the place of a curse. And pain is a disease. Yes, it is classified as a disease now in as much as it's a symptom. It is. And if you're bringing forth life, why would you choose to bring forth life in the presence of life? illness if you had a choice and um, so I really want us to um, get to grips with you know the advice we take and the advice we give others I know it's always good to learn from other people's experience but um, you have to be careful what um, you're learning from other people Again, I would like to say that there are different ways of um, delivering a baby and none is superior to the other. You could have a vaginal delivery. You could have um, a vaginal delivery assisted with instruments and you could also have an operative delivery which we usually call a caesarean section. The babies born through these different modes of delivery are not superior to the other ones at all. The important thing is that um, you have a safe delivery, a safe, alive and well mother, and um, a safe, alive and well baby. Now, I know this Kate talked about some complications of um, a particular type of pain we live in labor. We will be looking at that um, in another episode, but I also want to burst that myth. Again, epidural analgesia is a form of analgesia for labor, and we also use it um, for different and other types of surgery it does cause back pain i agree but the back pain that will be caused will you know manifest close to the time you've had that epidural it wouldn't manifest years after it is not nagging and niggling it can be treated if it becomes a problem we will know and we will treat it as such and also remember that there are many other things that can cause back pain during and around pregnancy. You're carrying a new baby and by the third trimester that baby is fully formed and some of them weigh up to 4.5 kilograms. That is enough weight on your nerves, your joints. Um, you're going to labor and you know the passage of that baby through your birth canal will also impinge on your nerves. This can give you back pain even if you have a caesarean section. It still has the potential of giving you back pain. Also, Caring for that baby after you've had the baby, you're sitting, squatting, lying, sitting on low stools in caring for the baby. All these have the potential of causing back pain. And do not forget that there are many other things that can give you back pain, you know, that is not even pregnancy related. So let us not um, allow mates deny us of um, beautiful and easier birth experiences. So stay tuned in the next episode. I'll be talking about the different forms of anesthesia and analgesia available during pregnancy, labor and delivery. Thank you very much.